Hello. Well, um, I've once again tried to make a mute cornet. Uh, in this case, I think I've finally succeeded. Uh, this is due in complete, um, was it uh, not due in part, but uh, incomplete, to a gentleman by the name of Steve Silverstein. Uh, he was kind enough to give me the actual correct dimensions on how to, on the, of the cornet, both the uh, internal diameters, the hole diameters, and the length and such. Um, so using this uh, information uh, that Steve gave me, uh, I went to uh, the 3D uh, drawing program. Uh, in my case, it was SketchUp, uh, and put all the information in. What, is, what was lovely about it is that, uh, basically, since I knew exactly the dimensions, I could just put it all in. I did have a tough time in creating what's, what would be called the skin around it, uh, and then uh, putting in holes. It, it created a lot of artifacts, which I had to get rid of down at, you know, the you know, tenth of a millimeter level, which took many, many hours. And then, uh, of course, um, seeing as the printer I have, the 3D printer I have, cannot print this tall, uh, I had to split it up into several pieces, uh, in this case, four pieces. And the actual actions of splitting also created artifacts that I had to go in and clean up, which took hours. But in the end, I had uh, four uh, files that I could print out. I've actually uploaded these files um, onto a Thingiverse. And let's see, what can I tell you about it? This is printed in uh, PLA plastic, uh, actually two different rolls because uh, I ran out of the uh, light clear blue and had to go with the dark blue. Um, I printed it out uh, in the manner of, well, with 3D printing, you have basically what would be called a shell. And in this case, like if you were to do a regular cylinder, uh, each shell would be just basically going in towards the center. Because this is in effect a, uh, a hollow cylinder, or rather a hollow truncated cone, you really have one surface that goes on the outside and then in and out again. So when you have the number of shells, the actual shells come in from the inside going out and from the outside in. So basically uh, what I did was I printed as many shells as possible um, in the hopes to get it to be um, airtight. I did do it a few different ways. Uh, the, the way I just mentioned, where I did as many shells as possible, is for the top three pieces, which are solid. Uh, the bottom piece um, was the piece I first started with and I thought would work uh, and should have. It's basically two shells and I think maybe 50% fill or something like that. But as I went to go print the higher pieces, about halfway through the prints, um, something would happen and the piece would get caught and then dragged around for a while and I had to turn off the printer or, or you know, just stop it in some fashion. That's why I hit upon, after consulting the forums, um, I hit upon the idea of, uh, or was recommended, uh, the idea of printing in as solid and as many um, shells as possible and this seemed to work out great. So once I did that, uh, I was presented with the uh, task of getting it glued together. Now, one way you can glue this together, in the case of this plastic, which is called a PLA, uh, is actually you can just soften it, you know, heat it up. So I actually took a, um, a frying pan that I don't use and uh, the little thermal guns uh, to register the temperature and raised it up to the temperature of the plastic, basically 230 Celsius. I would place, and I placed two pieces on it and let them melt and I jammed them together with my hands. And uh, it worked, but it also squished that area and this was completely un... It was hard to control because of just trying to put it together with two hands. So then um, I learned that well, epoxy would work quite well. So um, I wanted to epoxy them together. Well, this presented the issue of um, epoxy, you know, leakage uh, being you know squeezed out on both the outside and the inside. The outside, I don't care. I just wipe off the outside. But on the inside, that pres presents quite a bit of a problem. So what I did was I created um, basically the reverse. If you see the actual hollow area in here, I created a cone um, that actually was that area. So in this case, I made a cone that was like this high and was the actual inside area. And so with that, I took that cone, it was like two shells and maybe 10% fill, very light, and wrapped it in um, a parchment paper which is the, the cooking paper that has uh, embedded silicone. So as I went along, I would take uh, the one piece and I would push it in here and it'd come out. And so you'd have the, the, uh, the bottom piece here and then about halfway up, uh, the next piece would be the tip of that cone. I would then put the epoxy here, 
put the other cone on top, and because it is the actual inside of the uh, area, it fits very well, very snug. I did print it at uh, 95, no, excuse me, 99.5%, um, so the cone was slightly smaller than the actual area of the inside. So I thought, well, that would help me uh, make sure that it, it couldn't, like maybe not actually fit together all the way. So um, put the epoxy on, uh, put the other piece on, clamped it together, and in short, it worked awesome. Um, let it go for 12 hours, um, and then I would take a long uh, drill bit that I had, like about, well, about yay long, and I would just tap it out, and the piece would come out, the actual cone would come out rather easily. And then I actually took the inside of the, uh, well, I actually took the, the actual drill bit and used it as kind of a hook, and hooked out the, uh, the parchment, which came out quite nice. So this had the effect of, if there was any squeeze out happening on inside, it would immediately hit that parchment paper and be spread out on the inside, which I thought was perfectly fine and I think makes sense. Um, so once all the pieces were then glued together, um, I noticed that even though I printed these things solid, that I could still draw air through the side uh, or push air through the side. So they weren't air, it wasn't airtight. So then I went ahead and uh, got some, um, not epoxy, but um, shellac. Um, and in this case, I basically uh, grabbed a garbage bag, uh, put, the, put the piece in the garbage bag like this, poured in, just poured the can in, about you know a fifth of the can, just poured it in and tried to get it to come up to the top. Of course, it leaked out the sides, uh, out the holes rather. So once I got that done, I tripped it over, poured a little bit more of the can in here so it would come down to the bottom. And then I basically rolled up the bag and just, just squished it around, kind of like how you marinate a piece of meat. Just moved it around as much as possible to coat it. Uh, once, once that was done, I set the uh, uh, garbage bag aside. Later I put it back into what was left over. I put it back into the uh, can. And then just took it and just shook it and got as much off of it as I could. And once that was done, I just set it on a piece of hickory. As you know, uh, hickory is the wood I prefer to work with. And let it sit and um, drain and finally dry. And just that one coat of epoxy, and it was not cut. It just came out right out of the can. Uh, it was the waxless epoxy. Um, epoxy. It was the waxless shellac. Uh, once that dried, which I let dry over overnight, um, it is completely airtight now. So, um, let's see. There are several types of coronets. Uh, of course, just uh, Google uh, coronet, C-O-R-N-E-T-T, -T, and or just go to Wikipedia. There's uh, three types of coronets in general, and they have pictures of all each. This is the mute coronet, which is uh, straight, and the mouthpiece is actually a part of the structure, so you don't actually take the mouthpiece, mouthpiece out and put it back in. Uh, the mouthpiece actually is similar to a trumpet, it's smaller. I think it's like probably one of the smallest mouthpieces you could have if this was a mouthpiece. It has the cup shape uh, like you would think of as a normal trumpet um, mouthpiece, but it actually is one solid piece. And uh, there's just tons of information about this. Uh, as you know, I've been trying to make this for quite a while uh, in, in wood and the, you know, the pyramidal methods that I used to do. Um, but I think this really works quite well. So I think that's about it. Thanks a lot. Bye.